Welcome everybody to one hour of miniature goodness. Uh, let me just uh, just tell me if the sound is okay with everybody. Um, I shall quickly say hello to everybody in chat so far. We got my Scorpler, we got the Bull GM, we have Gavs in chat, we have Ernie X Hammer. Hello. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. We got Stuarts in the house, and Ty's in the house. Hello, Ty, and a Painterly Git, and Painterly Git is back. <laughs> Uh, tonight we are working on the Dwarf King's Crypt. Um, so what I've got here is a 12 by 12 inch MDF board, which I always use for all my boards to make a start with. And we have the old phone card. Now, as you all know, I play a lot of Dungeons and Dragons. So it's a one inch grid base. If you can just see what I've done there on this board, you can see it's all been marked out in a one inch grid base. So what we're doing today is we are building dungeons like you're playing Minecraft. It's a really, really simple way of making awesome dungeons. Uh, because we're using this one inch base, all we have to do is cut around all the little squares and then build them up. Plus today there won't be any need to cut any foam because we're going for a dwarf architecture, which will all be angles. So what we need to do is put placement of where we are going to put our crypt. So let's have a look at all the pieces. This is the Dwarf King's Crypt from the Bones 5 Kickstarter. Let me go down a little bit more. So we've got our main doorway. Um, what I've done here is we've marked out a 10 inch by 10 inch square grid base. And we've also got one centimeter around the edge for the walls, because all the walls with this phone card is one centimeter thick. Mechanical Frog, hello! Long stripy scarf, hello! <laughs> hello, hello, hello to everybody, everybody! Um, and by the way, everybody who's been entering the Mordor paint competition, it's absolutely amazing the entries I have seen so far. It is going to be so, so difficult to get some winners going at the end of December. Okay, so with the Dwarf King's Crypt, you get the doorway, you get some statues, you get the King's Crypt with the King inside himself, all dead and gooey. Um, you get a little book there, and you get this clear flame altar. I'm going to actually paint this grey to match in with the rest. Now, what we need to do here is work out where we want everything on my board. Now, I've been thinking about this all day long. Um, I was um, painting with Gareth earlier on Discord. Uh, well, trying to paint with Gareth is almost impossible because we end up chatting about Dungeons and Dragons and everything else that's going on and talking about Star Wars and, you know, just putting the world to rights. Um, so we never seem to get much painting done. <laughs> So uh, it's always it's always awesome fun painting with Gareth. And by the way, uh, Gareth, the Star Wars man who is in chat, we shall be streaming our next show next Friday, and that's a, that's our monthly show where me and Gareth pick the same Reaper miniature, and we shall be painting that live on the show. And that's always a that's always a good fun and a blast. <laughs> okay, so. What we need to do is I've got my stolen marker pen back from Claire, Scorpler. <laughs> um, it's a very, very simple build tonight. Um, so like I said, I've got the, the phone card and all we need to do is work out placement of the items. Um, and as you can see, we're going to go quite... Okay, so I want this one to go there. So what we need to do is just mark off the squares. So it's a bit of fun to be honest. So we'll just go like this with our little marker and mark off what squares we're going to add blocks to. So we're going straight across here and to there. This one, this one, this one. Our model will be there and raised. Uh, this needs to go, I think, just about there. Okay. Yes, so okay, so this one we want a four by four. So we're looking at 
one, two, three, four, like so. It's always best to mark off what you're going to do. Um, and same with this one, this will be higher up. Now, because we're using that one inch grid base, we can actually work our miniatures around what we're going to do. So we, we can actually say there's a little path going through in the middle of the crypt and the same on this side. Um, and because it's dwarf architecture, we want to try and keep everything the same. So it all kind of matches in. Okay. And this would be our doorway here. So we're leaving that as it is. Okie dokie. Now, to start building the rest, all we need to do is take our grid grids that we've done and then we take them off some more boards which have added more one inch bases and then we can start cutting them off. Now the key to doing dwarf architecture is making sure we've got all these little angles here. So that's really simple. All we need to do is go and cut straight across the middle of our inch grid bases and then build up the miniature on top. And that'll give us a lovely dwarven feel to our sculpture. Yes, it did, Ty. It's all here. It's all here. It's all here. Look, if you want to see all the minis, there's the minis. All the minis. <laughs> minis everywhere mini minis these are all the minis that came with the crypt as you can see lots and lots of minis it is an absolutely fantastic set hello geek curio so this is the complete uh, set that you get for the dwarf king's crypt and um, let me get some focus on I, I i'll quickly show you all the miniatures before we move on um, let me get closer I'll give you some focus and I'll give you a, a little look see now I did do a video with these miniatures but I will show you quickly this is the one statue I've got a little book an altar this is the actual crypt and the lid comes off as well and you can take out the dwarf king he's all smelly and rotten in the middle there this is the doorway got some dwarf script on there ruins runes this is the um, translucent little ultra with the flame this will be painted gray this will be just and then I'll just do ordinary flames with this one just to blend in with the rest of the dungeon and of course you get the king in ghost form She is very, very nice. And of course we get all the beautiful dwarfs. Thank you for following, Super Writer Andy. Super Writer Andy. There we go. Now we're very close, we're getting very close to our 600 follower giveaway. When we get to 600 followers, um, I will be giving away that beautiful copper dragon above me there. <laughs> and that will be sent free of charge to anywhere around the world um, to um, and the draw. Um, my Scorpler, who is uh, the administrator for the channel, she will take all the names who's in the channel at the time and of course put it onto the spinny wheel and the winner will be chosen and all we need then is uh, your address and we will post that off to one lucky one lucky winner And I'll be doing um, a free draw, just like the Copy Dragon above. Every every 100 followers um, who follow the channel, um, you'll have a chance of winning one of the painted miniatures that I do. And it'll be every 100. And of course, when I get to a... If, if I'm going to say if, but hopefully when I get to a 1,000, every 1,000 in the future, 
there will be a mega a mega sized mega sized prize just to reach that 1000 goal um i am super super happy how the channel is doing at the moment like i say i'm only a small streamer um but the support i'm getting from all my goblins and patrons and everybody else is just unbelievable so thank you to every single one of you hello michelle and hello polymorph and Geralt's in the house. Oh, you're all, you're all turning up to now. You're all turning up now. Okay, so let me get on with this today. Or as, again, the show will be finished before it's begun. As you can see, I've started marking out. It looks a bit of a mess, but I actually know in my head what I'm up to. <laughs> he says. <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do is cut out that middle part, which is a 4x4 four four grid. So I'll move this out the way. We'll, we'll keep interchanging and going back and forth, just so you can see what I'm up to. So all I'm going to go here is count one, two, three, four. Got a little steel ruler. And I'm going to start cutting off the pieces that I need for my crypt to I want all the crypt and the and the and the uh, statues around the crypt crypt to be higher up. Uh, so the crypt um, isn't so flat and boring. We want to keep it quite exciting for gameplay. Uh, places where you can kind of hide. So this is one, two, three, four. Let's cut that off there. Now I'm using a steel ruler. Um, you, there's no point using a plastic ruler with uh, a sharp crafting knife because you've got more chance of actually cutting through the plastic into your fingers. So you want to actually keep keep it as all a metal ruler if you possibly can. Now. Our crypt, this is for our crypt. Our crypt is going in the middle here. Now, as you can see, as you can see, we've got the Dwarven architecture. We've got these lovely little angles here. So the best way we can follow that is by cutting the edges along here. And it's very simple because all we're doing is we're just following the angles of our one inch base. So we're just cutting these corners off. Let's see. Yeah. and we do that all the way around like i say it's a very simple build uh to do dwarven dwarven type goodness in your dungeons um and it looks fantastic when it's done so all we do is we cut these angles off here And this will be our main plinth for the dwarf. Like so. And then all we do is that will be glued onto there at a later date. And we've got a nice little center to our throne. Not throne, our crypt. And so we'll go back here just so I can show you. That will be placed like so in the middle everything will be glued down with PVA glue and of course you can sandpaper the this this foam board you can sandpaper so it actually gets nice and neat and tidy so what we're looking for as well move this back out is we're making sure we've got that one inch grid base around all the areas so our little miniatures can run around and do what they need to do in game now we've got the two side pieces here they're exactly the same so again we're going back to we'll go on to this piece here and that's four four and two one, no it's not it's one two three four five six one two three four five six six and two so you want two six by twos The, um, we've been having really bad uh, internet connections lately as, uh, as well, uh, Michelle. It's not been the best best week for internet. And of course, um, uh, Twitch was supposed to have been hacked uh, in the last week or so. So we've had to change all our 
passcodes and all the other nonsense that goes with it. What's crazy is Twitch never actually said anything to us about uh, being hacked. It was through a third party source that we found out and Twitch still hasn't sent any emails. It hasn't sent e any emails or admitted that, uh, well, not that I know of, that they actually got hacked, <laughs> which is a bit, you know, nerve wracking. If you get confused when you're doing these boards, it's very simple. Um, what I could, what I do is I'll, I'll mark out the pieces that I want to keep like so. So we've got these little squares here. So I know I've got to take these two off that one. And the same here. i got to take these two pieces of that one. Oh, <laughs> I've, done, I've done that back in the front. <laughs> so all we do is we cut enough. I hope you can see everything all right. Like I say, tonight is a, a little bit of a crafty night. Um, I did say on my last show, I really, really enjoy making my gaming boards. So what we're going to be doing is I'll still be doing all my Reaper miniatures, but we'll be making dioramas and bases for all these miniatures. And I think it's awesome stuff because I absolutely love doing this. Uh, it actually, for me, it makes a better show instead of just showing you the painting all the time. Uh, you get to see dioramas being made and how simple and easy it is to actually make these little things. And like I say, when you're doing gaming boards for Dungeons and Dragons, I'm always working in that one inch grid base. Um, so it actually works out quite simple to actually build your tabletop games, your gaming boards, because we're working on this grid system. Um, it, uh, it's very pleasant. It's very nice to do. Um, and like I say, if you enjoy games like Minecraft, you'll absolutely love building dungeons. <laughs> um, I actually tried to use the inches on everything I do, even down to making uh, taverns, um, because it's not—it's not just—it's not just D and D. I play uh, polymorph, pow, poly polymorph. Sorry, um, uh, I play the Mantic Games Dungeon Saga, and that again is um, an RPG, and that's a one-inch grid-based games as well. And you'll find most games, most games are actually based on a one inch grid base. Uh, so using the, using one inches um, is perfect for most things, to be honest. Now this phone card is from Army Painter. It's for their, um, what do you call it range? It's from their Game Master range. You get like a little box with all their little um, phone card in and you can make all your little buildings. Now I use phone card uh, that's got the paper on as well. But for my dungeons, this is work, works out really nicely. Don't go throwing away any of the little bits because you can use them for little blocks and all sorts of goodies later on. Okay, so, like I showed you before, we've got this one over there. And then we'll have this one over here. And of course, um, I might go one high on the other side, but we have the book, the book on one side. Um... I've actually got this wrong. I need to put that one there. That needs to go in the center. So I need that centered like so. Um, and, and I need to ignore this one here. So where are we going? Here we got this little flame torch there. Altar, altar in the middle. Could be any way round. I haven't made my mind up yet. 
And now we've just got this end piece here. So I need to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and two in. Okay. Eight and two. Hello, cold air. How's cold air today? Okay, so we're looking at eight and two for this one. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And two in. One, two. And that'll do us for the end part there. Actually, we'll take it all off from there. One second. The squeaky styrofoam. Yes, it does squeak. Dokey, we get in there. Let's drink some water, some Vibina. Who's shouting out Pokey Stick? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even used my Pokey Stick to renegade Shank. Welcome. Oh, by the way, um, huge shout out to Renegade Shank. He uh, he knows I absolutely adore cookies. I am a cooker, cookie lover. And um, today, a big box of cookies arrived at my doorstep from Renegade Shank. Uh, he knows how to he knows how to flump me up for Christmas. <laughs> flump me up for Christmas. Okay, so we're nearly there. Just get these off. And like I said, it's such a simple way to make your dungeons. We just you just using like one inch base. I'm gonna keep on repeating myself um, because it's such a simple thing to do. <laughs> there we are. I mean, already the dungeon is already taking shape. Just by adding a few extra things to the dungeon um, makes everything work very, very nicely. So that goes just there. So we've still got that inch to get through. Now all we need to do is make these a little bit more dwarf-like. So what I'm going to start doing is I shall be cutting off the edges like I've done in the middle there. So what we what we're looking for is we've got room around the dwarf dwarf crypt, but we've also got room to go up onto the, the different stages as well. Now for the different stages. I've got um, this is this is half centimeter foam card. So what we can do is we can actually cut these and they'll be perfect for little stairs to help you get up. So that would be just there. So it's half the size of what we're using for the foam card. So we can cut that to size and they'll be perfect as little stairs going up and around the gaming board. OK, so what we need to do now is start cutting off the edges so we want everything to have an angle um, so we'll move this over here again I'm going to be back and forth with the gaming board so please excuse my wriggling around 
so once again we go to the edges and we just do a sharp angle cutting across and this will give us that dwarven feel to the crypt So we're going just like so. We'll do the same on this side. I have his cookies. <laughs> there we go. And we need to do the same with this one, the long piece. Again, we're just cutting off the actual end pieces. And this is just to give a nice angle to kind of blend in with the rest of the dwarven type architecture in our crypt. I right, say so I'm doing this fast um, just so I can show you um, a nice little build today. Uh, but of course you can take as long as you want doing what I'm doing. Okay, so we'll come back with this. Okay, dokey. So there's our main pieces there. Now, before we can start adding walls to this crypt, um, it's important to get all your um, sculpting done on the base. So we'll quickly go through that now before I start working on the walls. And again, it's a very simple task of just using a pencil because the styro styrofoam is very soft, we can actually put indentations into the styrofoam just using a pencil and sculpting it that way. So we just work out where everything's going. We have our little book over there. I'll have some little steps going down on each one there. This goes just there. Alter there. And then we got the statue just this side. So what we need to do now is just to actually, I'll get a bit closer just to show you. What we're trying to do here is on our one inch, we just use a pencil, just do it freehand, and you're just pushing in with the pencil, and we're gonna start making a nice little indentation just to make all those tiles on the floor pop when we do our dry brushing and make them look more like stone so we just go around all these tiles it's very simple quick and easy just using our pencil and because i'm doing it freehand you got like a little wobble going you got uh, like mistakes as you could call it and you, you can take the corners off and it really will start to look more like a very old tiles and once this has been painted gray or black it will actually be black and then we'll go and dry brush over the top of the tiles all these tiles will just pop and look absolutely beautiful and we do this to all the squares like i say it doesn't take long and just by using our pencil we're pushing down and giving a nice little indentation that's it's lovely and then when we go all the way around How do you draw breath on a picture if it is on Shank? <laughs> Shank is talking weirdness again. <laughs> he's, on, he's in a world of his own half the time. Okay. <laughs> so keeping on with the pencil, very simple to do, like I say. I'll, I'll try and be as fast as I can uh, because I know it's only an hour show and you want to see everything. Um, so I just want to 
give you an idea what we'll do is move this out the way and we'll carry on what we're doing is making sure these corners you want to take the you don't want straight edges on the corners on your tiles so you want to push down in the corners there and um, that gives a much better effect when you dry brush over the tiles later on if you have everything perfectly square it looks wrong on the, on the floors so having a nice worn looking tile really works really well now for the dwarven architecture of course we want to keep that nice and straight but for the actual tiles we want to try and get that uh, nice little worn effect going and that's just by pushing down of our pencil not too hard but just enough that we're getting a nice indentation into the phone card <laughs> pencil pusher <laughs> While I'm doing this, if you want to type into chat, give me a free mini. This is for all the people that are on a painted tier on my Patreon. Um, anybody who's on a painted tier on my Patreon um, gets um, a chance of winning a free miniature on every single Twitch stream I do. Um, and it will be posted with your painted miniatures that I do. Uh, this includes the patrons um, and supporters on my Kofi. I also um, do a membership on Kofi that you can have painted miniatures sent to your home as well. Give me a free mini! <laughs> now, I, I know Michelle is in chat. Um, anybody who is a $5, a $5 patron and up um in november i shall be starting to post all your christmas parcels and your christmas cards um now i post in november to make sure you'll get you get your parcels in time um because i've done it before and if you post too late and many of you because you live all around the world you won't get your parcels till after christmas so i post them practically a month early now the christmas card as you know this year is made by the absolutely beautiful and spectacular michelle um, she is doing a custom christmas card uh, made by herself and it includes the goblin king the goblin queen it includes my cats it includes my dog um and it's absolutely I, I've, I've i've seen the work in progress of what she's doing and it is i I'm, I'm not gonna lie it's the best it's the best thing i have seen in many many years it's absolutely gorgeous is is tal in the house oh you decided to grace us with your presence did you dungeon master mm-hmm <laughs> yeah <laughs> anyway if um if anybody wants to join my patreon and join the goblin army there's no pressure um i mean i am super happy with all the support i get anyway um the only reason i say about the patreon is because i have so many goblins who love the hobby so much and they go onto the discord channel as well a private discord channel and they just chat and muck around and play games um and of course you'll get um free christmas cards and all sorts of goodies um so yeah it's it's well it's uh it's a very nice little community we got going it's not huge it's not huge but it's just enough you know um it feels it feels it feels like family the goblin army feels like family because everybody knows everybody um you know <laughs> it's like when you when you, your mum used to talk to the neighbour over the fence for hours on end, you know. And I do apologise if I'm boring anybody, just 
making indentations on a piece of foam but honestly it's going to turn out absolutely beautiful so please bear with me all we're doing is making these tiles um, look worn and we're just giving a little bit of indentation which helps so much with the painting because all this will be spray painted probably with black uh, and that will then be dry brushed over with greys and it really does come out super super well Now, I will say one thing, um, with um, uh, rattle can primers, rattle can primers um, do not work on polystyrene foam. Uh, what you need is um, Army Paint to do make a special, make a special spray rattle can primer that you can use with this foam. If you use an ordinary rattle can primer, you've got a good chance of it melting the, the styrofoam, just like super glue. You cannot use super glue on your foam the super glue would just melt straight through it you know but it's like acid it's like aliens spitting on your styrofoam take care gerald thanks for popping in okay nearly there we just got to do this one little bit on the other side The thing with it is everything has a place. If I don't do these tiles now before I stick the walls on, um, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. These are the little walls. If I, if you don't do all your detailing before you stick the walls on, these walls are going to be just like so. You've got to try and get in there with your pencil. So it's actually easier to get all these little bits done before you add the walls. So get your insides. You're working from the middle out just to get the job done. But if you love Dungeons and Dragons or any type of uh, RPG game that uses a one inch grid base, doing the Minecraft, I, I call it the Minecraft because it just reminds me of the Minecraft of all the little blocks. It actually makes it a great fun way to um, make dungeons. Um, all you're doing is using these one inch blocks, building on top of the blocks and um, just you just keep on going. You can actually go as big or small as you want, um, but you just keep that, uh, one inch grid base and then you know you've got the correct movement phase for your games <laughs> excuse me and like I say with these tiles all I'm doing is making sure they're more taken you're just taking the edge off the tiles and making enough room that they will show when you dry brush over them um, and just by using the pencil that's all you need to do and on the first on my Thursday show you'll see um, the difference because on Thursday I'll of course finish up this will be finished on Thursday um, I'll get it all painted up on the show and uh, we'll move on to something else but it just proves how quick and easy it is to make your own little dungeons I mean you can use foam from all your uh, materials when you buy um, monitors or you buy anything off the internet they're often packed in foam um, you can use that foam as well and it's good to practice on because this um, styrofoam um, isn't uh, that cheap I think you can you can buy it for it's about 15 to 18 pounds for about six sheets of this styrofoam which isn't bad if you're like me, you're doing a lot of work um, on dungeons and gaming boards. Um, and of course, I send my gaming boards to my patrons as well. So um, um, I don't mind paying a little bit more of a premium for a better quality type of styrofoam. Uh, because, of course, they are getting sent out to people. Okay, we're nearly there, and then we can move on to these walls. I don't know how we're doing for time. Yeah, we're doing. Oh, oh, the time flies. The times go so fast. The time goes so fast. Now I will be um, 
I will be raiding Reaper Miniatures after the show tonight because Rhonda Bender is on and she is absolutely amazing. So once I've finished the show, if she is still live, uh, we shall go and give her a little shout out after the show today. Let me just get my placements. Okay, so that's going in the middle like so. That's good. We're getting there, people. We're getting there, people. I'm trying to go as fast as I can. <laughs> I'm so scared people are going to be watching me and they'll be like, Oh my God, I'm so bored. <laughs> I... So, nearly there. I keep on saying nearly there, nearly there, nearly there. You can see it's all coming together nicely. And it really does help marking out the places where you want all your parts to be. Now, when I show you the walls, the walls are super easy uh, to make for your dungeons. So I am going to show you that in a second. And like I say, on the Thursday show, I'll have all this primed and it'll all be in black primer, ready to paint on the Thursday show. Uh, so it'll all be finished on Thursday. Okay, nearly there. Some things do take a little bit longer. Like I say, as long as you get these corners flattened out, that makes it makes the actual tiles look more worn in what we're doing. And like I say, all I'm using is a pencil. Very simple. Okay, going to the last bits here. But it's very important you do these parts first before you stick the walls on, um, because you, you, it'll give you room to get the pencil in or get your tools in to actually get these parts flattened out. So once again, we'll go back to our scales. So we've got, this goes here. And so we've got two tiles here to do, like so. And this should be the last two tiles. And then we can start moving on to the next part of the dungeon. Well, actually we need to do the, <laughs> Oh, this is me, this is me. I'm, I'm jumping ahead of myself. What we need to do next is mark out these parts. So this goes here. And again, we need to do the same what we've done around the edges of this as well and these end pieces. Then we can stick them on with the walls, but not until we've actually put texture on our walls. So as you can see, that's it so far. That's our doorway going just there very simple build but once the walls are on and everything's glued into place and we've got the same color going throughout the dungeon everything just comes alive 
Um, I think you can trust me on that. I think most of you know that when you see me making a gaming board, the first initial build of the gaming board is like, what's he doing? And then it's like the second time you see it, it's like, ooh. <laughs> ooh. <laughs> Okay, so again, we've got the tiles. So this time, what we're doing is a, again making wonky little tiles by our, using our pencil. But this time we're going straight down. So we're making that mark go down. Just using by our pencil there. Pushing down with the styrofoam there. Just so we got a little edge. Flattening in the sides. And again here. By adding that in the middle, middle, we actually separate the blocks. We just don't want them all totally even. We want to make them look worn. So just by giving an edge, taking away a little bit of the edge of the sides of the rocks with our pencil there, flattening them out a little bit. It all helps. Same in the middle again. We need to have our crypt that goes in the middle like so. So we just need to work around these edges here. I'm just taking away a little bit of the edge from the each corner. Okay, and that goes on so like that. This one going here. What I'll do, I'll move straight onto the walls now before the clock ticks off be, before we finish. I just want to show you some of the walls. Uh, but as you can see, very simple so far. But now I'm going to show you the walls, and I've already pre cut, I've already pre cut a Blue Peter special. I've cut out the walls to length. So I'll give you an idea of how we get on. So I'll move that back there like so. Um, this is, that'll be just there. I, I tell you, you'll be amazed. You will be amazed how much planning, how much planning and preparation I do just to give you an hour show. It's not just a case of me jumping on the show and painting a miniature or trying to build something for you off the fly um i spend most of my day uh planning how i'm going to do this one hour show <laughs> um it, it's it's it does take it does it is difficult <laughs> but i just want to do a show where everybody kind of learns a little bit as well and they enjoy it um so i do i try my best to do things that's for sure okay so we've got these little boards here We got this little. What's going on there? We got these little. Um, we got these little boards here. Uh, these are two inch now. I've got. Let me just double check the measure inside for you. There's a actually two and a half inches, and these shall be glued to the one side of us like so. And of course they be because we've done these back supports there. Because we've done these back supports there, we'll be able to glue them and use the actual steps there to help stick this board on. Now the backboard, the back of the back of the I've gone for four inches. 
So this will be just in the middle like so. So we've got four inches in the back. And what I'll be doing is I'll be cutting off angles both sides. That, and that'll blend, that'll match in then with the dwarf architecture of this building. And of course we'll have the one side on this side like so. But before we can actually glue anything together, we need to add texture to these walls. I keep on burping. <laughs> I keep on burping. <laughs> I can't stop myself and I apologise. I got the burps. Okay, so let's move this out of the way. And I want to show you quickly. Let's see your time. Yeah, we got time. We got time, Mikey. We got time. We got time. Now, you're wondering. There's lots of ways you can add texture to your walls. Now, the, the, one, the one way. Let me just find a piece here is you can add your own texture like I do on the floors. You can actually get your styrofoam or your, and you can just add rocks like so. Very, very simple. You just have different size rocks. You just add in like so, and you've got yourself a wall. Easy as that. That's the most simplest way you can do it and it's done. But there is another way. There is one other way. And that is if you've got one of these. This is your green stuff, cobblestone rolling pin. <laughs> so all you do, you get one of these little rolling pins from Green Stuff World. And what they've got, they've got cobbles all over the, all over the rolling pin. So all you need to do to get yourself an instant cobblestone effect is you just add it to the end there. Let's see if we can get this in with a first shot and you put quite a bit of pressure on and you just go along with your rolling pin and remember just like when you're in the kitchen um, make sure you don't move that rolling pin you want to keep that rolling pin nice and secure you don't want to ruin the pie you don't want to ruin the pastry so you just keep rolling keep rolling keep rolling and keeping the pressure on All you can see is my hand. Um, you'll have to wait until I finish. There we go. Let's see if we go there. There you go. And as you can see, it leaves a nice pattern for texture. But what you need to do is try and not move the rolling pin. Because what will happen is if you move the rolling pin, you'll get double vision. You'll get rocks looking like they're in 3D mode. So you keep the pressure onto your styrofoam. <laughs> crafty tibbles yes it is awesome it is awesome it's just a, it's just a fantastic quick way to make really nice walls for your dungeons um there we are look at that absolutely gorgeous so within what what six, 60 seconds or less we have made ourselves one wall which is perfectly textured for our dungeons but what I like to do is both sides. Uh, so the outside of my dungeon looks just as nice as the inside. So once again, I'll show you again. Again, just pressure down on the rolling pin, making sure you don't move the rolling pin as you are going along the phone card. So just keep on going, keep on going. Keep that pressure on all the way, nice and even. Excuse my dog barking. She's already been for a walk, but she obviously wants another one. There we are. So once you get once you get all your yeah, nice and once you get your stonework all done on all your boards. I right, say so we're running out of time now, so I'll just quickly show you. So what will happen here is that will be lovely on the back of there. Once it's all painted up, you can't actually see it. Very, there we are. We've got, we've got a bit of a better view there. 
and we'll be adding this all the way around including the front um, and of course the back part will be raised and that will have the same that will have the cobblestone effects on as well okay so that's about all i've got for you all today